toy time at home. Presented by Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Hi, I'm Congressman Steve Shabbat, and I want to thank you for uh, joining us here this afternoon. I'm in my office uh, in the Crew Tower in downtown Cincinnati. We're up on the 30th floor. And one of the things that I always enjoy doing as a member of Congress is going around to schools uh, to read uh, to the, uh, the kids, uh, the students. I'm a former school teacher myself, so that's probably why I enjoy that so much. And uh, what I've done over the years and been doing it for a long time, I was reading uh, a particular book. It's called House Mouse, Senate Mouse. Uh, so I'm going to read that book to all the boys and girls that are out there uh, and their parents or grandparents as well. We happen to be grandparents ourselves. So um, I think perhaps our, our grandkids may be watching. Um, but uh, and, and the book is called House Mouse, Senate Mouse, because the Congress is made up of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Um, and uh, I've read this book so many times, I actually haven't memorized, but uh, I will glance down here periodically to make sure I'm, I'm uh, doing this right. And then we're going to have a little slideshow of the buildings in Washington uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that I work in, the Capitol building and the White House where the president works and that sort of thing. Uh, and then we're going to take questions uh, from any of the uh, uh, boys and girls out there. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask your congressman, um, all you have to do is go to the comments section on Facebook, uh, the comments section. Uh, and uh, if we could uh, have your name, if, your first name, uh, if you want, if your name is, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hannah or whatever your name is or, or Bob or, you know, just your, your name, just your first name. And uh, what what school you go to or normally would be going to school. You're probably at home uh, now, but uh uh, your school, and then just ask your question. And then we're going to try to get at as many questions as we possibly can. Uh, we'll, we'll keep this to an hour at the most, uh, maybe less than that, but uh, uh, no more than an hour. So uh, in any event, uh, uh, thanks for joining us again today. And again, I'm Congressman Steve Shabbat, and the book I'm going to read here is uh, House Mouse, Senate Mouse. And uh, here we go. America's mice have a government too, with presidents Senators and Congress mice who are elected debate vote the popular will. It's a rodent republic on Capitol Hill. There's a Capitol there that looks just like our own. A mouse house and Senate of column and stone. Mouse masons and workers copied every detail from the tip of the dome down to every last nail. One day in Mousori, a wonderful state, a teacher, Miss Tuft Mouse, at about half past eight, told her class, settle down, everyone, sit up straight. There's a special assignment, and it must not be late. The class, all together, for worse or for better, must write to our Congress an interesting letter. You ought to get started, not later, but soon, for you must turn it in by this Thursday at noon. Well, the children excited did not waste a minute, working hard on their letter and what to put in it. For three classes straight, they wrote and they read. Then the letter was finished, and here's what it said. Dear Congress, we think there should be, if you please, a law to establish a national cheese. We like this idea. We hope it will pass. Yours sincerely, Miss Tuffmouse's second grade class. Miss Tuffmouse, of course, gave the letter an A and mailed it to Congress the very next day, where it went to the mailroom where mail comes in crates from Mousori, Mississippi, and other mouse states. And I generally in the classroom would stop at this point and kind of explain uh, to the, the, uh, uh, the children, the students, uh, that we don't get a lot of uh, mail like that. Um, most of the mail that we get nowadays comes by emails or phone calls or even texts. We still do get some mail, uh, but mostly it comes by email and, and other ways nowadays because this book was written a while back. The postmaster took it to Longworth McMouse, the capable, confident squeaker of the house. A copy was rushed across to the Senate to the mouse majority leader, Russell Mouse Bennett. Then Longworth called Russell as quick as a blink, a national cheese. Well, what do you think? Good idea, the mouse majority leader said back. We'll draw up a bill to get it on track. Now they called this person the squeaker of the house. And I generally ask the boys and girls, so if you might want to think in your mind I wonder what they call the real person. I don't think we call him the squeaker of the house. Anybody know what we call him? We call him the speaker of the house. Uh, and the current speaker of the house um, is a woman named Nancy Pelosi. She's from California. Uh, she's the speaker uh, right now. 
To make a new law, Congress starts with a bill, a document written with care and with skill. To find the right words, mouse assistants begin at the Library of Congress and the books found within. And that building that you see on, on the screen there, that's the Library of Congress. Next, a committee considers the bill, for it just isn't finished or ready until the members discuss it, make changes, and more. Then finally, send it along to the floor. That's the floor of each chamber, the Senate and House. That's where each senator and each Congress mouse gets to vote on the bill. And if enough do, the president signs it if he likes it too. So when we're passing a law, it has to pass the House, where I'm at, and the Senate, where Sherrod Brown and Rob Portman are from our state, Ohio. And then it goes to the president's desk. And if the president likes it, he'll sign it. But if he doesn't like it, then he can, does anybody know what he can do? He can veto it, right, veto. And veto means no, and then it doesn't become a law. And I'm not sure if you've had fractions yet or not, but um, it takes, if the president vetoes something, it takes two thirds in the House and then two thirds in the Senate to vote to override the president's veto. And then it can still become a law, even, uh, even though the president didn't like it. But it's really hard to get two thirds in the House and the Senate uh, to agree on anything. So to get anything done, the Congress and the president have to work together. And sometimes we do, uh, and sometimes we don't. But it's not always easy for all to agree on just what a bill should do, say, or be. For example, the bill for a national cheese caused a big disagreement, a lot of unease. Some mice wanted cheddar to take the top spot. Some mice wanted Roquefort, but others said not. Some said Parmesan, some couldn't care less. So many opinions and such a big mess. And that's the way it is in Congress sometimes. We don't always agree on things and we argue about things, but we don't call it an argument. Anybody know what we call it? We call it a debate, that's right. A debate is when we disagree on something and then both sides get to give their point of view and then ultimately we, vo we vote on it. Just when it seemed things couldn't get bleaker, the mouse majority leader agreed with the squeaker to gather the brightest on Capitol Hill to figure out how they could rescue the bill. So they're gonna get everybody uh, together. And uh, they're in. And this next picture is in the rotunda. That's the big round room underneath the Capitol dome. Um, and this particular person, they're calling him Senator Thurmouse. And uh, I think they use that, they say he's the oldest and wisest is what they're gonna say. Um, well, there was a senator, his name was Strom Thurmond, and I think that's where they got Thurmouse, and he was 100 years old and when he was still in the Senate, so he's the, old, the oldest person that ever served uh, in the Senate. Uh, the rotunda was packed, a good place to meet when Senator Thurmouse rose to his feet, the oldest and wisest in Congress by years, the squeaker, the leader, the rest were all ears, so they're going to listen to him, they're all ears, but of course, again, these are mice. And now, if you notice what they've got, what they're dressed in, they're not dressed like I have a suit on. I don't have a tie on, but uh, I do have a suit on. And this is a famous picture here in our history, and that's Congress, and they're listening to him, and they're dressed in uh, the way people dressed back in colonial times a couple hundred years ago. So we don't dress like that anymore. And here's what Senator Thurmau said. Our mouse founding fathers, he said, were so wise, they founded our nation around compromise. They wrote it all down in the mouse constitution. So after much thought, I propose this solution. We are city mice, country mice, large mice and small. We like many cheeses, in fact, like them all. But we're Americans first. And now, if you please, let's agree that American is our national cheese. That makes sense, doesn't it? Bravo, they all shouted. Hooray, they yelled twice. What a good compromise, what terrific advice. In the House and the Senate, it passed right away, and the president signed it the very next day. And this picture you're seeing now is actually down in the White House, and you'll see the desk there, and the person behind the desk would be the president signing into law uh, what, what the Congress passed. And so here's the last page now, this, this one here. And just to uh, make sure you know what's going on, there's Miss Tupmouse uh, in her class, and you can see the blackboard, so that's in the classroom, and they've got a TV set in there, and the president is on TV. 
the kids are all sitting around and they're really excited because the president is signing their bill. They wanted to have a national cheese and they decided American. So they're really excited now and they're watching uh, the president signed the bill that they they uh, came up with. And back in Mousuri, where everything started, a teacher, Miss Tough Mouse, was very warm hearted. Look, children, look, she said, isn't it grand? We live in a wonderful, wonderful land. The end. So that's House Mouse, Senate Mouse. And I've read that book uh, quite a few times over the years. Uh, and they talk about, for example, uh, Mousuri. Can anybody out there think of a state that kind of sounds like Mousuri? Missouri, right, that's right. How about Mississippi? Anybody think of a state that sounds like Mississippi? Right, Mississippi, that's right. And we, of course, live in Ohio, although there may be some folks out there who live in other states that uh, maybe relatives or friends uh, link them in, but for the most part, we're probably Ohio. And our, our district is the first congressional district, the first uh, congressional district of Ohio. There are 16 uh, congressional districts all together in Ohio, and the one that I happen to have the honor to represent is the first district. So uh, what we're going to do at this time is we're going to, and, and let me remind folks again before I get into this, if you have a question, um, all you have to do is go on to the comments section uh, on your Facebook page there, the comments section, and you can type in your, your question. We're going to get to those in just a minute if I ever stop talking, right? So we'll get into those questions, and you just uh, tell us your name, your first name, and what school you would normally be going to, but I know because of the uh, coronavirus, um, we're mostly in our homes and, and socially distancing ourselves from each other so that we don't you know, pass anything on because we want to make sure everybody's healthy and, and gets through this together. And, and uh, we as Americans are working together and, and making sure that we're all safe, which is really important. But uh, so if you'll tell us the school that you normally would be going to, so your name, the school, and then your question. Um, and then we're going to uh, read those questions here in, in just a couple of minutes, and I'll try to uh, do as many of those as we have time for. So at this point, I'm going to show you some slides of the pictures in Washington. These are places uh, that the government is. That first uh, uh, shot that you see there, that's the Capitol building, and that's the building that I work in. On one side of the building is the House, and on the other side is the Senate. The House, we say House, but it's House of Representatives, and I'm a representative representative of the people uh, in the first district of Ohio. Um, and that the dome, that part on the top, that's actually the third dome that's been on that building in our nation's history. This one was added around the time of the Civil War. And, and you can see some pictures of Abraham Lincoln when he was being inaugurated president and it's under construction uh, back there during the Civil War. That shows you how old this particular uh, dome is. And one other thing that's kind of interesting, and sometimes you'll see this on proficiency tests, so that if the kids want to pay attention, um, this is the Capitol building, and you spell that C-A-P-I-T-O-L. So it's an O when you're talking about this particular building, uh, the United States Capitol building. But if you're talking about Washington, D.C., which is our nation's capital, it's A-L. Or if you're talking about Ohio's capital. Does anybody know what Ohio's capital is out there? Columbus, right, Columbus. And so you, that's our capital of our state. That's A-L at the end. But this building, it's O-L. And people get that mixed up all the time. Even, even grown-ups uh, get that mixed up too. So let's go to the next one. And this is just another slide, the same building, the Capitol building. You'll see those steps kind of in the front in the picture. Those are the steps that I go up uh, when I'm going in the House of Representatives uh, to vote. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'll do here. Let me get my wallet out and I'll show you my voting card. This is uh, what I use to vote uh, for the people of this district. There you go. Right there. That's uh, get the camera right there. Yep. That's my voting card. There's about 40 voting uh, machines in the House of Representatives. And I just slip the card in the machine if we have a vote going on. And uh, if I want to vote yes, I put a push a green button. If I want to vote no, guess what color the button is? Red. That's right. And I push a red button. And then if it has more yeses, more greens, then it passes in the House. Um, is it a law yet? No, because it's got to pass in the other end of the building in the Senate. That's right. And then uh, is it a law then? Nope. The president's got to sign it. That's right. But if the president doesn't like it, he can, remember that word? Veto. Right. Veto. Um, and then two-thirds in the House and two-thirds of the Senate could vote 
to override his veto, but remember, we have to work together. So we hope that the Congress and the president work together. So uh, let's go on to the next slide. Um, that's just another uh, picture of the Capitol building. Uh, you can see on each end of the building, the, the one uh, on, I, well, one side is the House and one side uh, is the Senate. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, in that building, you look at that and think, what is that building? Anybody know what that is? That's the same building. Um, that is the Capitol building, but it looks different. What do you notice that's different about the Capitol building there? The dome, right? The dome really looks different. That's actually the second dome that was on the Capitol building. And, uh, but I didn't bring uh, a picture. I don't have a picture of the Capitol building with the first dome on it. Uh, do you know why I didn't bring a picture with the first dome? Because they hadn't invented cameras yet. So there, there isn't a photograph of the first dome because we didn't invent cameras yet. Uh, this is the very first picture that we know of of the United States Capitol building, and it has the second uh, dome on there. And also the House and Senate, they expanded the building on both sides because as our nation grew, the building had to grow too uh, to uh, allow more members of Congress you know, to be there to vote for our, for our laws. Okay, I'm getting kind of boring now, right? So let's move on. All right, this, this, is, the, uh, this is a painting, and the, the people you see in the red coats there are the red coats, the British. Now, a lot of people think that must be the Revolutionary War. We want our independence. It's not. This is actually the War of 1812. Does anybody know what year the War of 1812 took place? 1812. That's right. It actually was 1812, 1813, and 1814. Uh, but uh, that'd be a mouthful to say the War of 1812, 1813, and 14. So we just say the War of 1812. And we didn't do so well in much of that war. And the British troops defeated the American troops on the outskirts of the city of Washington and then marched to the Capitol building and set it on fire. And then they marched down uh, Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House, which is about a mile down the street. And uh, Dolly Madison was very brave. Who's Dolly Madison? She was the first lady. She was James Madison's wife. Uh, and she was very brave. He was out trying to rally the American troops. And she was at the White House and she was trying to save as many things uh, as she could, because they could see the Capitol building on fire up at the other end of, uh, and they knew the troops were going to come down and do the same thing to the White House. So she tried to save a bunch of things. And one of the most important things she saved was a great big painting of George Washington that she rolled up like a carpet and uh, put it on horseback and got it out of there right before the British troops uh, arrived and set the cap, uh, the uh, White House on fire as well. So let's go to the uh, next one. And that's the Capitol, or excuse me, that's the White House uh, today. A uh, very beautiful building. Let's go to the next one. I wonder what that is. That's the White House also. So it's the same building. It's just a different side of that. That's called the executive branch of government. Uh, the president and the uh, the agencies under him, that's the executive branch. Legis we're the legislative branch in Congress. And this is the kind of stuff they have on proficiency tests down the road. There's three branches, executive, legislative. Uh, and then let's go to the next one. This is the third branch. This is the judicial branch, which kind of sounds like judge kind of, doesn't it? And that's the U.S. Supreme Court, nine Supreme Court justices. Uh, and that's right across the street from the Capitol building. So three branches, executive, uh, legislative, and, and uh, judicial. Okay. And this is an overview of Washington. Probably a little hard to see. The Capitol building is right in the middle of that. And uh, we'll just leave it there because on, on this kind of screen, it looks a little bit too small. Okay. Um, anybody know what that is? The Washington Monument, that's right, 555 feet uh, tall uh, and in honor of uh, George Washington. Okay, next. How about this one? The Lincoln Memorial, Lincoln Memorial. And inside the Lincoln Memorial is Abraham Lincoln. That's right. And there's Abraham Lincoln. That's one of my favorites. I really think that's a very special uh, place there. Okay, let's go to the next one here. Anybody know what that is? The Jefferson Memorial, named after Thomas Jefferson. Uh, and uh, now it's real easy to see uh, uh, the, the Jefferson Memorial in that picture. But look at this next picture. We can't see it. Our view is obstructed by this tree. It's actually very beautiful. Washington is very well known for this particular type of tree that blooms in the spring all over. Anybody know what kind of tree that is? The cherry trees. We have a cherry blossom festival, although now people have to keep away from each other, you know, until we can get healthy in our country again, get rid of this coronavirus and that sort of thing. So we can't get too close. So I'm not, it's probably not going to be much this year. Um, but our view is obstructed. We got those cherry trees, kind of interesting. Um, it was a, uh, 
a uh, the first lady who was the first lady of an Ohio president, uh, uh, William Howard Taft, who's from Cincinnati. And the first lady, his wife, got to be good friends with the first lady of Japan when, when they were over there. And the first lady of uh, Japan, as a as a uh, gesture of friendship, gave the first lady of the United States 2,000 cherry trees, and they brought them back over on a, on a ship uh, and discovered that these cherry trees were infested with little bugs. So they had to burn them all. And so the first lady of Japan was very embarrassed. So she gave us 3,000 cherry trees this time that were not infested with little bugs. And they planted those all around Washington. And they're just beautiful. People come from all over the country, in fact, from all over the world to see the beautiful uh, cherry trees. Um, now, unfortunately, cherry trees generally don't live uh, 100 years. And, uh, and that was over 100 years ago, if you go back to William Howard Taft's administration. He was from Ohio, as I mentioned, from Cincinnati. Um, so uh, there are still six of the original cherry trees, at last count, that are still there. These are the ones you see now are the offspring of those cherry trees. And one of them, I, every spring I go and look and see if it's still there. And it is. It's over on the grounds of the Library of Congress. And, and its, it's uh, trunk is kind of gnarly. It kind of looks like that. And there's a two by four kind of holding it up. But it still blooms in the spring. And I think it's very beautiful. So anyway, let's go on. And this is the Library of Congress, uh, not the most beautiful building in the world from the outside, but inside, if you look at it next, it's just beautiful. And um, that's called the Great Hall. And it's just a very beautiful building, the largest library in the world, more books there than any library in, in the whole world. OK, next. And then finally, uh, just a pretty picture of Washington at night. Now you can see the uh, the Lincoln Memorial up front, and you can see the Washington Monument and the Capitol Dome in the background. And then you see the kind of moon over. The kids will always ask about the moon. Wow, doesn't it look pretty? And and it is very beautiful. I don't I don't know if the uh, uh, the photographer there took a little artistic license and enhanced it in some manner. I'm not absolutely sure if it might be pollution, to be honest with you. But uh, it does look very very beautiful. And before I get to the next picture, I'll, I want to explain this next picture and the pictures after it. Um, and I'm going to open it up for questions here in just a minute. I'm almost ready to stop talking and start listening. So anyway, um, the uh, one of the first questions I almost always got from uh, from kids when I said, OK, who has a question? You know what they'd ask? They'd say, have you ever met the president? I heard that over and over again. So I thought, I'm kind of tired of hearing that question, so I'm going to answer the question ahead of time. So I put in order all the presidents that I've met from most recent to the first president uh, that I met, and I've got pictures with them here. So I'll run through these pretty quickly. There's one I want to tell you a little story about. And so this is our current president, and that's uh, President Trump uh, and, and me. So, okay. And next, and that's President Obama, our, our president right before uh, President Trump, uh, and that's down in the White House. Okay, next. And that's uh, George Bush, the son. Uh, there are actually two President Bushes. This is a son. There are also two President Adams. Uh, so that's happened twice in our history where a father and a son were both president. Uh, and that's President Bush, the son. Okay. And this is the one I wanted to explain. Uh, that's President Clinton uh, and, and uh, Al Gore. Now, when I, have a, when I do a slideshow, I have a, uh, a laser pointer, but I can't really do that. Uh, in, in, with what we're doing here, but I normally would point out, make sure everybody knows who they are. So if the parents want to point out who, or grandparents want to point out who's who here. Uh, the president is is there. That's Bill Clinton. Right next to Bill Clinton is Al Gore, his vice president. And then right next on the other side is uh, one of our two senators, John Glenn, and then me. Uh, and and John Glenn was one of Ohio's senators, but he was something else before he was a senator. Anybody know what he was? He was an astronaut. A very important uh, position. He was an astronaut, uh, and he is the first American, not the first one who went into space, but he was the first American to go around the Earth in a space capsule. So he was the first American, and then he later on became a senator. Now, the lady in the middle, and that's kind of the interesting story here, um, she's a very special person. She's a She was a teacher. Her name was Sharon Draper, and not only was she a teacher, but she was the teacher of the year. In the whole country, in all of America, she was uh, that year picked to be the best, peach, uh, best teacher in, in the country. So uh, they honored her at the White House. And that picture is a, a photograph down in the White House. And they invited me down because she was from my district, from Cincinnati. And so they had me come down and she was from Ohio. And that's why John Glenn's there. And it's the White House. And that's why the president and vice president were there. But her name is Sharon Draper. And she was a teacher in Cincinnati. And uh, she now writes children's books. 
and she's holding the award that she got for the uh, teacher of the year, but just a, a great person and, and from Cincinnati. Okay, next. Uh, let's see. And that's George Bush. Remember I said George Bush, the son. Uh, this is George Bush, uh, the father and me a long time ago, about 30 years ago. Okay, next. And this is the last one. This is uh, Ronald Reagan. He's the first president uh, th that I met. And that's actually down in the White House when he was uh, president uh, uh, then. And that's a much younger Steve Shabbat in the in the picture there with uh, President Reagan. Um, so I think that's all the slides. So what we're going to do at this time uh, is we're going to go to questions. And uh, so, again, I'll remind you, uh, if you have a question, uh, all you have to do is go to the comments section on your screen. And if you'll give us your first name and what school you would be attending if it wasn't for the coronavirus uh, and whatever your, your question is that you'd like to ask. So uh, we're going to start right now with questions. All right. So our first question is from Carrie. And she asks, how many people do you work with? How many people do I work with? Uh, well, Carrie, I'll tell you. Um, in, in Congress, there are 435 of us. Uh, so I'm one of 435 in the House of Representatives. And then there are 100 senators. So I'm one of 535 there. Um, but I also work, I have what's called a staff. Um, and I have, I believe, six here in Cincinnati and in uh, Warren County. Uh, our district is... Uh, all of Warren County and most of Hamilton County and most of Cincinnati. Uh, and I'm in my office here in downtown Cincinnati uh, in the crew tower. We have about five people who are normally in this office. And then we usually have one person and another person will rotate up in the Warren uh, County office. And then I have a staff in Washington too. We usually have uh, seven or eight on our staff up there. And then I'm the uh, ranking member of the House Small Business Committee. And I have staff people there. Uh, usually eight or nine uh, staff people there. So I work with all those people and, and I try to work with all my constituents too and in, in trying to, you know, take care of their needs and, and uh, trying to help them too. So I uh, hope I answered your question there, Carrie. Maggie from Jolis Elementary asks, how often do you go to the White House? How often do I go to the White House? Uh, you know, usually a few times a year. Uh, I go to the White House. The most recent time I was down there was the uh, signing uh, three weeks ago of, of a bill. Actually, today's Thursday, so tomorrow will be Friday. It was three weeks ago uh, tomorrow, uh, the signing of the bill called the CARES Act. And this was uh, Congress's uh, reaction, uh, the third reaction. We had a phase one, phase two, and phase three, and this was phase three. And I was down there invited at the signing ceremony with the president, the vice president, and three other members of the House. And there was one senator uh, who was there. So it was pretty special to be there. But I'm usually there a few times a year uh, for, for one reason or another. And it had probably been about a month before I uh, was there prior to that. All right. Julie from Pleasant Run Elementary asks, how do you become a congressman? Julie, that's a good question. Um, you, you run for office, you know, and people elect you, basically. And, and you have to get more votes than the other person who's running against you. So that's... Uh, you know, that's kind of the way it works. This is, uh, I've been fortunate. This is my 24th uh, year uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives. I was also a, uh, uh, a county commissioner, Hamilton County Commissioner, for five years before that. And then I was on Cincinnati City Council for almost five years uh, before that. And uh, I was also an attorney, practiced law, and I was a school teacher, which is why I really enjoy uh, doing, uh, doing what I'm doing now, you know, with the kids and trying to educate them about how government works and all, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. But, but you have to run for office and there's an election and, and get elected. That's, that's how you get to be a member of Congress. Arabelle, who is homeschooled, asks, can you tell me what some of the books behind you are about? Yeah, Arabelle, these are some old law books actually, uh, behind me here. Uh, these are cyclopedia of law and, and, it has to do with the law, basically, and they're mostly, I don't, they're so old that I don't really use them much anymore. Uh, and when I first started practicing law about, how many years ago was that? Good, goodness, was it uh, more than 30 years ago? Um, there was a lawyer who died and uh, they were giving away his law books. And I went and got a whole bunch of law books for free, actually. And, uh, and they look real nice up there. So I don't use them too much. They're old cases from... Uh, almost 100 years ago, but they look good in the background. So, <laughs> Avery from Visitation asks, what is your favorite thing about being in Congress? Avery, you know, uh, 
there's so many things that I really enjoy about the, it. Probably the main thing is that you can actually help people. You can, you can do a lot of good for a lot of people who need the help. And right now during this coronavirus time, especially, uh, you know, you really get to be out there and involved with people and, and, it's heartening how well the people of, of our community have come together. Um, and, and so that I like helping people and, and that's probably a favorite. My next favorite part would probably be actually getting to, uh, to educate young people about how the government works um, and how it could work better. Uh, but I really enjoy having been a school teacher myself. I, I really do enjoy interacting, going out to schools and, and reading to the kids and talking with them. But since I can't go out to schools right now because they're all closed, we thought this would be the next uh, closest thing. But uh, thanks for that question. Charlie from JF Burns asks, what can we do to help with coronavirus? Charlie, that's a good question. I mean, the, the main thing that we can do is try to keep our distance uh, from each other. Uh, and the, the governor, uh, our governor, Mike DeWine, has been on television virtually every day and, and Dr. Acton. And we've also had the president and Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci. And, and so the experts are telling us the best way to follow, you know, it, to, uh, to keep this disease from spreading. And some people are more vulnerable, obviously, than, than other people are. Um, for example, um, my, uh, my wife's mother, my mother-in-law turns 100 years old. Um, next week, next Tuesday, she'll be 100 years old. And we had a, another gentleman, uh, Ed Burke, who was a World War II veteran. I've known Ed for years. Uh, he was a tank commander at the Battle of the Bulge, and, and he turned 100 last week. So I got to talk to him. I called him the next day and had a wonderful conversation. But my mother-in-law turns 100. But the, So when you're older, especially, you're very vulnerable, or even a younger person, uh, that, that maybe has heart disease or, or a lung disease of some sort or diabetes, an underlying health condition, they may be very vulnerable and they could even die. So, so it's very important that we follow what the medical uh, experts are telling us to do so that we can fight this uh, coronavirus uh, uh, disease because it is very serious. And uh, so we should follow what the experts are telling us to do. Quinn asks, how do you vote now and maintain social distancing? Yeah, we don't. Know. That's a good question. How do you vote and maintain? And I guess he means uh, Congress vote, or does he mean people vote at the uh, polling place? That's that's a good question. Uh, the Secretary of State in Ohio makes in the local uh, elections boards. They they make the determination as to how we vote. And right now we actually have. Um, you know, the primary going on and, and they moved it to the uh, April 28th. And uh, so people right now are doing it by mail for what's, what's ever left in this one. Now, some people have already voted, like I voted before election day by actually going to the board of elections. I usually do that uh, because I'm oftentimes in Washington on election day and I have, I want to make sure that I, I vote too. But up in Washington, when the last vote that we had three weeks ago, uh, we went back there to pass this CARES Act, which was mostly about fighting the coronavirus. And only about half of us were there because people had Trump, you know, there weren't a lot of planes weren't flying and and people were concerned. So only about half of us actually showed up for the vote. I, I was there and they had us scattered out. Since there weren't that many of us, they had us all scattered. There were three or four seats between every one of us. And we even had some of us up in the visitors gallery, which I've never seen members of Congress sitting up there during a vote either. So they had us all spread out so that we didn't come into contact with, with each other. And uh, there have been about seven or eight members of Congress that have uh, tested positive uh, for the coronavirus. Uh, one of those actually is we had a hearing in the House Small Business Committee that I'm the ranking member. Well, the chair of that committee, um, uh, she had a, I used to be the chair for the last two Congress. She's a chair. She's from New York. And uh, she had a hearing. And the name of the hearing was the, uh, uh, the uh, it was called the impact of the coronavirus on America's small businesses. Well, two weeks after holding that hearing, she was tested positive for coronavirus herself. That was about two weeks ago now. Um, so uh, probably went way too long on that, on that answer because I want to get in as many questions as possible. So I'll, I'll stop there. Next question. We have Lily from St. Dominic asks, what did you want to be when you were little? Lily, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to uh, be a pilot flying, flying airplanes. And I sort of got that wish because I fly back and forth to Washington each week, but I don't get to fly the plane. I'm a passenger back in the back with everybody else. But uh, 
Uh, it's kind of like my dad worked downtown for years and we lived in Price Hill and then in Westwood. And my dad used to take the bus down to work every day and he would read going down in the bus and I read going back and forth to Washington uh, each week. But I wanted to be a pilot. That's uh, that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. So I got kind of close. I'm in a plane usually, but I don't get to fly it. All right. John from Cincinnati asks, do you know Governor DeWine? I do know Governor DeWine. He's a he's a fine gentleman. I've known him for a long time. He was actually elected to the Senate back in 1994, which was the same year that I was elected to the House of Representatives. So I, we served in Congress, but we were in the different houses. But we kept in communication. All of us do uh, communicate very well, especially in Ohio. We've done a lot of that. Um, and and we, we're bipartisan. The Democrats and Republicans work together if we're from Ohio. It works out it works out uh, real well, but I, I know uh, uh, Governor DeWine uh, very well, and his wife, Fran, they're uh, very good people. Jackson from Sycamore asks, when do you think we'll go back to school? Jackson, I don't know, um, and I hope relatively soon. I probably just, all the kids are mad at me now probably because, you know, you're not supposed to like school, I guess, but you should because school's good. You know, it's, and you, you learn stuff. You want to have a career and, and be able to support yourself and your family someday and that kind of thing. But we, we don't really know uh, when schools are going to, or whether we're going to go back this year or not. Um, you know, it might be say May, May 1st or something, but then that only gives you about a month. And, and some schools systems have apparently announced that they're, uh, they're not probably going to go back into session this year. So we, we really don't know yet. Um, and uh, we'll have to wait for the governor and the other uh, experts and what their advice is. So, I, I, Jackson, I don't know is, is the true answer. That doesn't, give, that doesn't keep me from talking a long time about it, though, doesn't it? Leslie asks, what happens when the small business money runs out? Uh, Leslie, that's a good question because, unfortunately, that's happened today. Um, we passed this bill about three weeks ago. It took about a week to get it going, and uh, which is like record time for Congress. Uh, and in two weeks, uh, there was $350 billion for America's small businesses to keep them operating. A lot of them have been closed down and it's through no fault of their own. And that's why we're trying to help them and, and help the people that work there. About half of the people in America who work, work for a small business. Um, so it's really important. And, and the money has been you know, going to people all over the country to keep their businesses open and be able to pay their employees. But it ran out today. And so that's why I think it's very important for Congress uh, to come to an agreement. Right now, we're kind of arguing. Remember, we call that debate. That we're kind of debating, even though most of us aren't there right now. Um, but we need to replenish that fund. The president had suggested $250 billion. Um, and then some other members of Congress are saying, well, hey, let's add some more money for these other things. And that's what we're debating about right now. I hope we can get it done. And in my view, we ought not to be uh, politicizing the situation or pointing fingers back and forth at each other and say, oh, my ideas are better than your ideas and stuff. Let's, let's get it done. Let's help America's small businesses to stay alive and keep those people employed. Liam from Oak Hills asks, how often are you on TV? Uh, William, <laughs> uh, you know, it's hard to say, you know, I was on C-SPAN the other day. I was on we did an interview with Channel 9 and Channel 12 just yesterday, but I didn't see them on TV yet, so I don't know if they run them. So it, it all depends. You know, during election time, there are a lot of TV commercials, and so you're on on there for that kind of stuff. And uh, But oftentimes they ask you. I've been on more than, than normal lately because of uh, my involvement in this small business uh, uh, bill. Uh, so it really varies. Uh, and, and when they ask, you go on and you, you talk about what they want you to talk about. That's kind of the way it works. Amelia asks, what is your favorite color? Amelia, I've always liked green. So I, I'd say green's my, my favorite color. I like blue, too. I like most colors, but I'd say green. Jacob from St. Susanna asks, do you have any pets? Uh, Jacob, we do. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the sad thing is we had a dog for almost 16 years and Sparky passed away about a year ago. So we're still sad about about that. You can all imagine, you know, when you lose your pet. Um, but on the happy side, we've had a turtle for about 30 years now, the same turtle. Um, and uh, his name is Shelly. And you might say his name, Shelly, kind of sounds like a girl's name. Well, the kids, uh, they thought Shelly was a girl, but Shelly was actually a boy, and uh, we've still got Shelly, and uh, 
uh, Shelly's, I think, going to outlive me probably. Shelly's been around a, a long time. And Shelly is what, what you call a musk, M-U-S-K, uh, turtle. They live in the water. Uh, they're they're kind of mean turtles, um, and uh, they they have they're known they're known for uh, their just irascibility. They they're just kind of nasty little turtles. But we we like Shelly a lot. In fact, when I tried picking up, he used to go like he was going to bite me. It, it, that's the way he did. Um, but uh, he uh, he's he's a good turtle. And so yes, we have a pet, and I actually have some fish as well. But uh, a lot of people don't consider them pets, but uh, I like them. I've got a saltwater tank and, and a freshwater tank. Aiden, who is homeschooled, asks, what is your favorite place in Washington and in Cincinnati? Uh, Aiden, uh, well, in, in Cincinnati, uh, it's hard to pick one place. You know, I went to LaSalle High School, so you might want to think it'd be, you know, LaSalle or my football uh, stadium there. I, um, I've always liked Mount Echo Park over in Price Hill where I – uh, proposed to my wife Donna uh, many many years ago. Uh, I like Fountain Square; it's beautiful. You can see it from our windows here in in the Crew Tower. Um, you know, any skyline uh, or Gold Star or, or, or Girdle of Roses. I mean, I could go on and on. Any any one of those restaurants, I I like to eat. Um, so, uh, but you know, as far as Washington, it'd probably be the Capitol Building. Um, it's a, a beautiful, majestic building with a lot of history. Um, it's very important to our country. Uh, I wish it. I wish the organization that works in the Capitol building, the Congress, uh, worked a little better together. Um, uh, but but the building itself is is uh, is beautiful. I've always really liked the Capitol building, and I've been around. I've been a member of Congress long enough. You get your offices by seniority, and uh, the view out my window is is just gorgeous. The dome dome is right out the window, and uh, it's probably one of the best views uh, in Washington. David from Harrison asks, who is your favorite president? Uh, David, <laughs> who's my favorite president? This is going to get me in trouble. Uh, probably Ronald Reagan, uh, you know, as far as modern presidents and probably Abraham Lincoln, uh, you know, if you're looking at historic uh, uh, presidents. So now President Trump's probably going to be mad at me because I didn't say President Trump, but uh, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Maria from Delhi asks, what is your favorite food to make at home? Uh, Maria, well, you know, lately I've been making sandwiches, uh, for my wife, it's in my, myself, it's the, I can't say it's my favorite thing, but it's the one I've been making lately with, uh, hard salami and, and cheese and mayo on bread that I toast in the oven and they're pretty good. Uh, I made them for, for lunch and I've been doing a lot more teleworking as everybody else is. I'm doing conference calls constantly. I did one for a member of Congress in Kansas today. I did four of them yesterday. Um, about small business stuff. You do it for about an hour. Um, so I've, I've been doing some of those from here in the offices, some of them from at home. So I've been cooking more than I do. And when I say cooking, I mean making a sandwich. But anything my wife makes is my favorite food because she's a, she's a great cook. Um, and I like pizza and there's nothing better than bacon. I mean, bacon is, is great. So uh, uh, again, I'm talking too long. So let's go to the next question. Unfortunately, I'm told that we've run out of time. Uh, don't we want to do this for two or three more hours? Uh, but uh, I guess not. Uh, I'm, I'm told that this is the last question. So uh, uh, the last question, who gets to ask this last question? Jason from Lebanon asks, Jason. what grade did you teach? Uh, Jason from Lebanon. And thank, thank, you for, uh, thank you for listening, Jason, and all the, uh, uh, the boys and girls out there and their parents and grandparents uh, it, it, as well. Um, what grades did I teach? I taught the seventh and eighth grade. Uh, this was many years ago. I was fresh out of college and I was going to law school at night and teaching during the daytime. And I taught the seventh and eighth grade down at St. Joseph School down on Ezra Charles Drive in the in the West End, right down the street from Taft High School. And uh, and I also so, and I had the entire seventh grade and the entire eighth grade in the same classroom uh, all day long. So you can imagine what that from, a, you know, a, a new teacher. Um, I had uh, like 20 seventh graders and 10 eighth graders, so 30 kids in the class. And on one side of the room, I'd have the, I'd be teaching, say, the eighth graders English, and and I'd have the seventh graders doing a math assignment over there. And I went back and forth every subject all day long. And then a couple of days a month, I taught uh, physical education to the ins entire school, which was four or five hundred kids 
uh, all the way from eighth grade down to, I think we had first grade or kindergarten. It's hard to remember. It's been a long time ago, but uh, about 500 kids. I had the entire school basically for PE. Uh, and that was, that was something. So, uh, but that's, that's, uh, that was my uh, teaching career and I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I like to say, I think the kids, I, I think I learned more, uh, you know, from the kids than they learned from me, to be honest with you. But, uh, but it, it was uh, interesting and I tried to keep that, the teaching part up by doing this, uh, to this day. And, uh, I, I really enjoyed this a lot. I hope this, uh, worked out for you all. I uh, hope I didn't go on uh, uh, too long and, and start boring the kids. And uh, some of them probably over playing video games and stuff now, but the parents are still watching, right? So anyway, thank you very much. And uh, we'll, well, maybe we'll do this again sometime. Thank you. Got free books in the mail. Sign up today. Go to Ohio Imagination Library.org to find out more.